Blast Beer is on the air. Blast Beer is everywhere. Blatt's, Milwaukee's finest beer, brings you transcribed Duffy's Tavern, starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Friends, good taste isn't a matter of geography. A good, juicy steak is appreciated just as much in Los Angeles as it is in New York or Milwaukee. And the same goes for good beer. Take Blatt's, for example. There's nothing unusual about the good taste of the people who have made Blatt's the largest selling beer in Milwaukee, premium beer capital of the nation. They're the same kind of particular people who have made Blatt's the largest selling Milwaukee beer in scores of other cities in 48 states and 29 foreign countries. Yes, from B to Z, from best to zest, the bywords Blatz, B-L-A-T-Z, from coast to coast, Milwaukee's finest beer. Hello, Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meet to eat and drink Blatz beer. Archie, your mind you speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. What's cooking? Uh, nothing. <laughs> the chef just quit. <laughs> Uh, no, the hours was okay, and the pay was okay. <laughs> it was his cooking. <laughs> he couldn't stand it. <laughs> What'll our customers do if we don't serve some food? If we don't serve some food? Do the same as when we serve food. <laughs> You'll eat someplace else. <laughs> Besides, there's only a few customers in the joint. Well, Herbie the Midget's here. Yeah, just got out of the hospital. Poor little guy. Spent two whole weeks in an oxygen thimble. <laughs> what was his trouble? Uh, he had uh, kidney pebbles. <laughs> and guess who else is back from the hospital? Sailor Slavinsky. Will you remember that hundred dollar bill he had tattooed on his chest? He was robbed. <laughs> huh? No, just the flesh wound. <laughs> But the joke was on the crooks. <laughs> the tattoo was counterfeit. <laughs> uh, hey, that reminds me, Slippery McGuire's coming down tonight. Huh? You saw because he sold you that vanishing cream for Mrs. Duffy? But Duffy, he didn't guarantee to make a vanish permanent. <laughs> okay, so he's a phony. But he's my pal. And I will book no insults on his behalf. Good day, sir. <laughs> Eddie. Yes, sir, Mr. Archie? Eddie, Slippery McGuire's coming down here tonight, so leave us lay out the welcome mat for him, huh? We can't do it. Why not? He swiped it the last time he was here. <laughs> well, that's all in the past, Eddie. Slippery's gone straight. After all, a leopard can change his spots, can he? Well, if he does, it'll be for stripes. <laughs> Just a second. I'll have you know that Slippery McGuire and me has been pals ever since our school days. Hmm. We Some were... pal. Every time that crook comes down here, he swindles you out of your money, and you wind up calling him a dirty, thieving crook. Well, that's true friendship. <laughs> the guy must think an awful lot of me to put up with it. <laughs> You know, Slippery McGuire and me has been pals ever since our school days. We was in PS4 together. Is that so? Yeah, he was even treasurer of our graduating class. You mean you graduated with Slippery? Uh, Miss Duffy, yes. As a matter of fact, there was no graduation that year. The cap and gown money disappeared. He started kind of young, didn't he? Yeah, and it was quite a blow to Slippery's father, one of the finest men I've ever met. But it wasn't his fault he couldn't guide Slippery in the right direction. How come? He could only see him on visiting days. <laughs> A chip off the old cell block, huh? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> what about his mother? Mrs. McGuire? Sweet old lady. But she could never learn to refuse Slippery nothing. You know, she spoiled him. He'd come in and say, Mom, I need a $5 bill. She'd go right down the cellar and print one. <laughs> Yeah, it was like that till the day they... The day they shaved her leg. <laughs> yeah? 
<laughs> Poor Slip has been through plenty. He's been through you a few times. Maybe so, but Slip has put his past behind him. He's now in a legitimate business selling war surplus. Like what? Oh, pistols, uh, shoes, flashlights, uh, refrigerators. Refrigerators? War surplus? The Cold War. Oh. <laughs> You know, Eddie, I, I'd like to throw some business slippery's way. You might think I'm going hog wild, but you know what I'm going to buy? For what? An airplane. <laughs> An airplane? Yeah. Hey, you know, I've always wanted to fly. Well, have you ever considered a kite? <laughs> Don't belittle me, Eddie. You know, he's always getting rid of secondhand planes, and maybe Slippery can get me one. Imagine me own airplane. A B-29 or a PBX, you know. <laughs> Flying up there in the clouds. I, I wonder what it's like. <laughs> you an aviator. What's so funny? How will you get dizzy when you eat a three-decker sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> I bet even I could fly better than you. You could fly. Miss Duffy, I'm talking about airplanes. <laughs> Not Halloween night on a broom. Listen, it so happens that the best pilots in history have been women. Oh, yeah? Name one. Cobina Wright. <laughs> Cobina Wright, a, a pilot? Only the most important of the Wright brothers. <laughs> well, okay, him. But, uh... <clears throat> But that's just one. <laughs> Don't try to tell me nothing about aviation. You're talking to Archie the Ace. <laughs> I got air in me veins. Oh, yeah? Then how come you black out every time you lick an airmail stamp? <laughs> Besides, what kind of a junky crate is Slippery McGuire going to palm off on you, Archie? It ain't no junk. It's a genuine army surplus. I know. That crook sold Mama a surplus girdle that split the first time she wore it. But don't blame the girdle just because your old lady has too much surplus. <laughs> Archie, why do you always have to say such nasty things behind Mama's back? Well, it offers such a broad field of operations. <laughs> oh, you, you never have a good word for anybody. On the contrary, I have five good words for you. Hit the road. That's only three. The rest ain't hard to figure. Ah, uh, make a noise like a hoop and roll away. <laughs> Say, Mr. Archie. What is it, Eddie? Your friend Slippery McGuire is here. How do you know? I just reached into my pocket and found myself shaking hands with him. <laughs> Wait, Eddie, quiet, you old embarrassing. Well, Archie, my old pal. Well, Slippery, my old buddy. My old schoolmate. My old sidekick. The next voice you hear will be that of the old prosecuting attorney. <laughs> Eddie, get out there and join us. Well, Slip, it's great to see you. I guess you've been working hard. Well, uh, not too hard, Arch. I like to take things easy. Yeah, you do it that, and yet you're a success. How do you do it, Slip? What's your point? Ah, uh, very simple, Arch. Hear no evil, speak no evil, and keep moving. <laughs> Still the same old Slip. <laughs> you know, I missed you lately. You must have been away, huh? Oh, only for 30 days. <laughs> What was you doing? 30 days. I mean, uh, uh, I've been uh, putting in some time for the government. You know, uh, working on this surplus army stuff. Oh, yeah. I've been meaning yeah. to ask you, Slip. Ain't it a little late to be selling army surplus? Arch, come in. This is surplus army surplus. <laughs> You're right on a ball, ain't you, Slip? Oh, sure, Arch. <laughs> I'm only selling things that people can use in practical everyday life. Yeah, practical everything. Yeah. Like yeah. what? Uh, well, like uh, landing barges, steam <laughs> shovels, Quonset huts, anchors, 
<laughs> Ripcords. Parachutes. Just a second. What's practical about a ripcord? <laughs> what else are you selling? Well, uh, let's put it this way, Arch. What do you need? Well, I don't really need nothing, but I was kind of toying with the idea. Silly to say. Go ahead, tell your old pal. Nah, it's too absurd. What is it, Arch? I was thinking of an airplane. <laughs> a fighter or a bomber? Well, you mean there's a chance? Look, Arch, uh, how much have you got to spend? Well, not very much, just 14 bucks. 14 bucks? For that, I wouldn't sell a plane to my own brother. Mm, well, that's all I got. Brother, you bought yourself a plane. <laughs> of course, uh, for that price, it won't be a four-motor job. No, four motors. No. Uh, well, how about one of them, uh, them uh, helium copters? Oh, well, that's a cinch. Just give me the 14 bucks and I'll go get it out of stock before somebody else grabs it. Okay, hey, I slip good luck and happy landing. Roger. <laughs> we'll go. <laughs> Aren't you taking to it like a duck? <laughs> See you later, you ace you. <laughs> so long. So long, Slip. <laughs> All right. Hey, Eddie. Yeah? Eddie, guess what? Slipper's going to get me one of them helium copters. The what? One of them airplanes you can land on a dime. Three to one that Slippery don't leave you a dime to land it on. <laughs> oh, no. Eddie, Eddie, I can see myself right now. Hmm? Me hand froze to the controls. Coming in for a graceful crash landing. <laughs> All of a sudden, I get a flash on the radio. Stand by for ceiling zero. Oh, oh, hello, Finnegan. Hey, Finnegan, maybe you'd be interested in my new project. Uh, do you like flying? Uh, no, not me. Why not? My arms get tired. What I mean is Slippery McGuire was just here, and he's in the army surplus business. Uh, he... I said, you out of his mind. Why? Who's going to buy a surplus army? <laughs> right. Uh, did you buy anything from him? Yeah, I bought an airplane. No fooling. What kind? Well, uh, you know what a helium copter is? Sure, a guy who cops helium. <laughs> Well, not exactly. Oh. It's an airplane. Oh. And oh. terrific. It can go straight up in the air and straight down, sideways, frontwards, backwards, you know. It's ambidextrous. <laughs> in fact, it can do everything that a bird can do. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'd like to see it either one. I think you've got a nice, clean air pocket where your head should be. Uh, thanks, Dutch. I've always considered myself air miner. Uh, so have I. But uh, uh, there's only one thing I can't understand. What's that? Uh, what holds an airplane up in the air? Well, uh, that, uh, that's a thing I'll have to explain to you. You know, it's uh, one of the basic laws of physics. Uh, for instance, you take air. That's uh, H2O. It's much heavier than water Now, on the other hand, uh, metal is a conductor Which conducts the oxygen through the hydrogen uh, Which creates a vacuum Which gives us gravity <laughs> Which, in turn, naturally pulls the plane up into the air Is it clear so far? Uh, what am I, a dope? <laughs> No, but even I had a little trouble with it at first. <laughs> well, uh, to go on, uh, you see, we take the stratosphere. Uh, what, uh... Well, it's what it sounds like. Uh, it's, uh, it's a fear of high places. <laughs> stratosphere. <laughs> now, in order to fly a straight line, the navigator checks the ground speed against the plane speed, which is, shall we assume, uh, 200 Fahrenheit an hour? <laughs> 
Oh, that sounds like a lot of Fahrenheit. <laughs> Well, don't forget, we've come a long way since the days when we had to land a plane by hand. <laughs> Today we have automatic horsepower, frequency modulation, uh, wing spreads as high as uh, 39 RPMs, <laughs> automatic tail fins uh, in case the rudder goes on the blink. Uh, you know what used to happen in the old days when the rudder went on the blink? The car didn't give no milk. <laughs> Are you sure this whole conversation ain't been too mechanical for you? No, not at all. Dude, by the way, how chances for a job on your point? Well, I don't know. You think you're right for the air? As right as I am for the land. <laughs> oh, come on now. Give me a break. I could help run your airplane. Dude, you know me, Uncle Pierre was your famous flyer. Your Uncle Pierre? Well, yeah. He was the first guy to try to cross the channel in a balloon. And Arch... Uh, guess what he used for ballast? What? A case of Blatt's beer. <laughs> yeah. A very tasty ballast. Yeah. Uh, did he have any trouble getting a balloon across the channel? Uh, well, it would have been a perfect crossing, but for one thing. What was that? He never got the balloon off the ground. <laughs> Why not? He just couldn't bring himself to throw that ballast overboard. <laughs> Well, with a wonderful beer like Blatch, you can hardly blame the guy. But uh, tell me, Finnegan, uh, didn't that balloon ever get up in the air? Oh, yeah, one time, much. My uncle took the black out of the balloon, and it sailed way up in the air. 5,000 feet, 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, 50,000, 40,000. Back to 40,000? Air pocket. <laughs> yeah. And then up to 50,000 feet, 100,000 feet. Wait a minute, Penny. Nobody could live at 100,000 feet. The, the very words my uncle said as he sat there on the ground sipping his glass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your uncle was a very smart guy. <laughs> Yeah, back, Slim. Huh? Uh, well, uh, tell me, where's me helium? Hey, uh, look, Arch, we've hit a little snag here. The Army's getting a little sticky about their airplanes. Yeah, huh? We'll have to clear this deal through Washington. <laughs> Who in Washington? Come here, Arch. Nobody listening? No. Can I trust you? Sir? The man I'm talking about is you know who. No, Ken. You know who? Arch, please don't mention names. <laughs> yes, sir, we're taking this right up to the top. Give me the phone. Here you are, sir. Thanks. Hello. Hello, operator. Washington, D.C., please. Hello, Arch. <laughs> this is Slip. Oh, can't trig me. Lay himself. Hey, <laughs> uh, look, Dean, I got something for you to clear through, uh, you know who. Yeah, a buddy of mine wants to buy a helicopter. Yeah, something in the ten to fifteen dollar bracket. <laughs> in the bag swirl, Dean. Well, uh, give my regards to the gang on Pennsylvania Avenue. Oh, by the way, uh, tell Harry I'm still trying to get that Spike Jones record of the Missouri Waltz, will you? <laughs> okay. So long, Dean. That's ah, your all set. You got yourself an airplane. Oh, gee, thanks. Boy, I can hardly wait till I take me first spin in that helium cap. Your first spin? Just a minute, Arch. You won't be able to take that plane up in the air. Why not? No propeller. <laughs> what? Arch, did you ever hear of anybody buying an airplane with a propeller for $14? No. Well, then let's be reasonable. <laughs> okay, how much more for the propeller? One dollar. I ain't got a dollar. <clears throat> All I got is this uh, lucky piece here, Slip, if you're willing to take it. It's a, just a Chinese coin. Chinese coin. Uh, uh, what's it worth? 200,000 yen. What's that in American money? Half a buck. <laughs> well, uh, let's see what it says here in the catalog. Let's see. Helicopter, $14. Helicopter landing gear, $12. Oh, here it is. Helicopter propeller, 200,000 yen. <laughs> Boy, I was 
was right on a button, huh? Uh, this is your lucky day, Arch. And now that I got the final okay from you know who, I'll arrange immediate delivery. And here's your official handbook of flying instructions. With the personal autograph of Gregory Peck. <laughs> The greatest flyer of them all. Well, so long, Arch. See you in the cockpit. So long, Slip. <laughs> Boy, Eddie, you know, this is wonderful. I can see myself already. Whizzing across the continent, transatlantic flights across the Pacific. Can you imagine it? Breakfast in Duffy's Tavern. Two hours later, lunch at the Miami Biltmore in Chicago. <laughs> Ten hours later, supper at the Hollywood Bowl. Well, what held you up between Chicago and Hollywood? Well, I had to stop. I needed gas. <laughs> Not if you had breakfast at Duffy's Tavern. <laughs> I don't see the connection. Well, that's where we're all set. Oh, Slip, hey, I forgot to ask you, where am I going to keep this helium copter? In a hangar, of course. A hangar? Where am I going to get a hangar? Well, uh, don't you know anybody that uh, might sell you one? <laughs> oh. Slip. <laughs> hey, maybe you could, huh? Arch, don't you think this is carrying friendship a little too far? Yeah. Although it just so happens I do have a few hangers in stock. You do? <laughs> yeah. Slip, could you could you spare me just one? Well, uh... yeah, just for old times' sake. Oh, what's the use, Arch? You always get around me. <laughs> I'm too soft-hearted for my own good. Uh, how much do you got left? Well, I'm broke, dear. You know, you took me last fourteen bucks. Well, that was your money. How about the cash register? What, are you suggesting arson? <laughs> That's Duffy's money. So what? An airplane hanger right here on his roof will mean more business to Duffy, won't it? <coughs> hello? Duffy's Tavern. Eddie, the ground crew speaking. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Duffy. Uh, Mr. Archie? You mean Archie the pilot? He's busy. Dipping his wings in the cash register. <laughs> By the way, uh, <clears throat> how much is this hanger? Huh? Uh, let's see the catalog here. List price, June, it's seven dollars. Well, that's okay. I get ten dollars here. Ten? Oh. <laughs> well, that's June. Let's see. July eight dollars. August nine dollars. Uh, Arch, what month is this? September. That'll make it even ten dollars. <laughs> yes, sir. And to show you what a good fellow I am, with the hanger, I'm going to throw in a wind sock. Well, thanks, Slip. I, I wear a size 12. <laughs> I'll make a note of that. Well, Arch, one more meeting with our contact, you know who, and we'll have you up in the air. I'll be right back with the plan. <laughs> Hey, I slipped two bucks. Well, okay, Arch, and here's your wings. You know who insisted that I give them to you at the wholesale price. Gee. Yeah. Now, Arch, you're all set. I'll be right back with the plane. Hey, I slipped two and a quarter. <laughs> and here you are, Arch. Your genuine never leak parachute. Together with a box of emergency tire patches. Gee. Well, Arch, it looks like you're all set. I'll be right back with the plan. Seventy-five, eighty-five, ninety cents. Here it is, slip. Okay, Arch, and here's your non-skid white wall retractable landing gear. Gee. Well, Slip, when do I get me plane? Yep, yep, just as soon as I get final clearance from the uh, you-know-who. <laughs> Slip, it's empty. <laughs> empty, huh? Well, uh, uh, never mind that, Arch. I got great news for you. Congratulations. For what? I've just been in conference with the uh, you-know-who, and you-know-what? Who? Hey. I mean, what? Hold on to your hat, kid. He's coming down here tonight to install the hangar in person. In person? 
What an honor, huh? Uh, certainly. And naturally, before he puts you in the hangar, he'll want to look over your pilot's license. Your pilot's license? Yeah, that's just the formality, of course. But I ain't got no pilot's license. But no pilot's license? No. This is a fine time to tell me that. Is it serious? Oh, what have we got ourselves into? Do you know what the fine is for operating a plane in a hangar without a license? How much? $29.15. Slip, this is terrible. Can't, can't you fix it with the you-know-who? Well, now, look, that depends. But where am I going to get $29.15? Uh, I mean, Sting, how about the dough I gave you for the plane and the hangar and the parachute and stuff? How much was that? $29.15. By George, that's quick thinking, Arch. <laughs> I'll take it right over to you-know-who. So long, little pal. So long, Slip. Thanks a million. Gee, Eddie, I, I, I don't know what I'd do without me, old pal, Slippery. Say, Archie. Oh, hello, Officer Clancy. You look kind of tired. What you been doing? I've been looking for a swindler who's been operating on Third Avenue. Oh, yeah? What's his name? You-know-who. <laughs> From five is two, carry the three Z's and add four. What you doing, Miss Duffy? I'm subtracting twenty nine fifteen from your weekly salary. What's so tough about that? Did you ever try to subtract twenty nine dollars and fifteen cents from fifteen dollars? <laughs> and all because you had that crazy idea about being a great flyer. Yeah, and I didn't even come close. Well, I don't feel too bad. After all, you did succeed in making an ace of yourself. <laughs> Don't try to cheer me up, Miss Duffy. What really burns me up is that I had my heart set on taking a plane trip to Milwaukee. Well, maybe you can't go to Milwaukee, but we can bring Milwaukee to you. How do you mean? Here, have a black beer. Uh, thanks, Miss Duffy. You know, I, I guess you could travel everywhere and never find a better or more refreshing beer than Blatt's. <laughs> right you are, Archie. So right that if you took a palate preference poll of the people in Milwaukee or in the state of Wisconsin, you'd find the majority, and I mean the great majority, would agree with you. Yes, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the premium beer capital of America, the brewing center of the USA, the home of our finest beers, Blatt's, B-L-A-T-Z, is the largest selling beer and by a great and growing margin. Friends, you don't have to come from Milwaukee to appreciate Blatt's. Try Blatt's tomorrow. Compare it with any beer at any price. Your own good taste will tell you what folks in Milwaukee have known for almost 100 years, that Blatt's, B-L-A-T-Z, Blatt's is Milwaukee's finest beer. I'm from Milwaukee, and I ought to know, it's the same old story wherever you go. This is the tune you will always hear, which is Milwaukee's finest beer. Be sure to listen next week at the same time to Duffy's Tavern, transcribed over most of these same stations. Here's all you need to know about wine. C-R-E-S-T-A B-L-A-N-C-A Cresta Blanca Cresta Blanca When it's wine you want and only the best will do, when it's wine you want to make the occasion truly memorable, remember two beautiful words. Cresta Blanca Cresta. The Ronald Coleman's will be back next Wednesday on NBC.